Good afternoon. First at four, the second impeachment showdown over the future of President Donald Trump. We'll get you caught up on where things stand at this hour. Here in Michigan, it's not the news many restaurant owners, employees, and customers were hoping for. Governor Whitmer defends another tough decision. And here's Ben. Karen, it is now the warmest day of the year, and from the looks of our forecast, we may hold on to that record for a while. We'll look at a very wintry turn coming up right now. First at four. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, you may have been watching NBC's coverage of the debate over impeaching President Donald Trump. The debate started at about 1230 this afternoon. The vote, as you see, was underway just a few moments ago. Local 4's Devin Skillian in the newsroom with a quick look at the historic events over the past few hours. Devin. It's been something to watch, Karen. We've never, in fact, seen a week like this in American history. Just seven days ago, a mob of Trump supporters were attacking the U.S. Capitol, trying to stop the confirmation of Joe Biden. Biden's victory in the 2020 election. Fast forward to today, a week later, the House of Representatives just spent hours debating the second impeachment of President Donald Trump. We know that the President of the United States incited this insurrection, this armed rebellion against our common country. He must go. He is a clear and present danger to the nation that we all love. It's always been about getting the president no matter what. It's an obsession, an obsession that is now broadened. It's not just about impeachment anymore, it's about canceling, as I've said, canceling the president and anyone that disagrees with them. House Democrats drafted just a single article of impeachment. They accused President Trump of incitement of insurrection for uh, this speech given to supporters just before many of them marched on the Capitol, plus weeks of denying the election results and casting doubts on our entire political system. Support for the impeachment is spread onto the Republican side of the aisle, with about seven members we expect uh, will end up voting yes. That we'll see as that vote is underway right now. We haven't heard much from President Trump today. Uh, he remains uh, blocked from Twitter and most social media platforms, of course, uh, but has released a statement to Fox News calling for Americans to, as he put it, ease tensions and calm tempers. He also tells Fox, here's the quote, in light of reports of more demonstrations, I urge that there must be no violence, no law breaking and no vandalism of any kind. Not clear why the president didn't hold a news conference open to all media. Uh, again, this is just going to Fox, but this is the message that he is sharing this afternoon. Of course, we are monitoring the vote in the House as it's happening. We'll have the final results and when the vote has been counted. Hope you'll join us tonight on Local 4 News at 5. We will hear from many Michigan uh, lawmakers as they've shared their arguments for and against impeachment. Our coverage continues uh, of another key moment in American history at both 5 and 6. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Mm -hmm. And no matter what happens with impeachment, we're now one week away from the inauguration of President-elect Joe Biden. Security is ramping up dramatically since the attack on the U.S. Capitol one week ago. Here you can see the National Guard issuing weapons to troops. Each member gets a pistol and a larger rifle. Between 15 and 20,000 troops are expected to be in the Capitol leading up to the inauguration. Security is so tight, camera crews even caught some Guard members sleeping in the floor on the floor, I should say, inside the Capitol. Now here at home, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and her health team are loosening some COVID-19 restrictions. Things are changing for gyms and indoor sports, while indoor dining remains on hold a bit longer. The governor is defending the very cautious path her team is following. The pause that DHHS issued is working. And we are once again standing out in the Midwest and across the country as a leader in fighting this virus. So here is a look at some highlights from today's update. Registration for an employee assistance grant program open soon. This is for people who lost income in industries hit by the pandemic like food service, hospitality and entertainment. The window to apply is from January 15th to the 25th. We posted a link to more information at clickondetroit.com. The governor says in order to improve overall health, group exercise and non-contact sports will be allowed with masks and social distancing required. Now that change in policy is in effect from January 16th to the 31st. And possibly the governor's toughest call, indoor dining, remains closed through February 1st. Governor explained why she believes that is necessary. We know that places where people are mixing households, taking off their masks and dining inside, 
It's inherently where we see spread. Study after study after study has shown that. It's not their fault that, that, that the activity in which they engage is inherently more risky. State Republican leaders continue to criticize the governor's stand on restaurants. Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky calls the continued closures both tone deaf and an overreach. The governor says indoor dining may return on February 1st with strict restrictions that will be outlined later. Now, late this afternoon, the state just announced it's recorded nearly 2,700 new cases of COVID in the past 24 hours. Also, another 32 people have died. A few more notes from the governor. She says she's pushing for more vaccines to be delivered to Michigan, and the state is now partnering with Meyer to speed up the vaccination efforts. The city of Detroit has kicked off mass vaccinations for seniors over 75 years old at the TCF Center. 400 people received the COVID-19 vaccine on the city's first day. About 40 people living in Detroit fall into that age group, and the city will drop the age limit to 65 once more doses are available. We did post information on how you can make an appointment in Detroit, and you can find information for locations throughout Metro Detroit on our homepage, clickondetroit.com. Well, Michigan lawmakers are getting back to business right now as a new legislative session opens in Lansing. It is the 101st session in the state's history. Lawmakers have been outlining some of their priorities, including new ethics guidelines. They start meeting as security concerns in Lansing reach a whole new level. A six foot fence will be installed around the Capitol building in preparation for possible protests this weekend. Tonight at five, we're going to dig into those concerns. And then at six, we'll talk about the legislative goals continuing coverage on Local 4. Now, these next few days are undoubtedly tense for so many of us struggling to make sense of the seismic shifts in our political landscape. What we saw a week ago today is what we're used to seeing in other nations, not our own. Paula Tutman joins us this afternoon with thoughts from a local political violence expert who tries to help us navigate through what is happening. And we definitely need some assistance in understanding all of this and also on how to react. Paula. Hi, Karen. Yeah, from his perspective, we are entering a very dangerous time in our democracy, but he really does want to point out that the average person should feel safe in their homes. However, they should also consider taking a very proactive role in subverting this danger. Professor Peter Trombor has spent his career learning and understanding the underpinnings of political violence in hotspots around the world, including Northern Ireland. <laughs> But today, as the chair of Oakland University's political science department and an expert on terrorism, the field lab is his own nation. When we look at where the, the predominant number of plots and attacks, terrorist attacks in the United States, really since about 2009, uh, they've come from the far right of the American political spectrum. Uh, white supremacists and white nationalists, uh, far right wing anti government activists and groups. From the goggles of his studies and expertise, he believes that the insurrection, an attempt to kill democracy and overturn the free, fair, and legal election, is throwing up danger flags all of us should be heeding. I think what I worry about is that these groups after January 20th. Uh, aren't simply going to fade away. And he believes we all have a role in keeping democracy safe during these fragile and dangerous months. So you don't have to worry about going to Kroger. Yeah, you don't have to worry about going to the post office. Um, what I would say is, is I think you want to stay as far away as possible from any of these demonstrations that are being planned. We've got this, uh, this phrase that came in after 9-11, right? You see something, say something. If you see people milling around on the street corner in tactical gear with long rifles, you know, they may have no intention of doing anything wrong, um, but I wouldn't hesitate to call 911 on that and let them explain that they're engaged in, in their legal First and Second Amendment rights. I think last Wednesday, unfortunately, is a, a start, not an end. It's going to be remembered either as the moment when we, we woke up and realized the danger and, uh, that we've gotten ourselves into and the fragility of our institutions and our democracy, and then took serious actions to fix it or it's gonna be remembered like that opening shot on, on Fort Sumter and the start of a new period of violence in our political life. Yeah, so simple, our role, if you see something out of place, say something, Karen. All right, thank you, Paula.
Now let's take a look at the first forecast. Hello, sunshine, my old friend. Hey, Ben, we're getting a break from those gray skies. Oh, and it's feeling a little warmer out there, too. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, Karen. Uh, we haven't seen it in so long, and that actually helped us get to our warmest mark of the year so far. We're at 44 degrees. Now those clouds are starting to come back. The satellite doesn't go completely clear, but these are high and thin clouds, a lot different than that low, thick stuff that we've been used to that's really been blocking a lot of the sun. So more of sort of the milky white finish here, uh, even if some of the bright blue skies that we saw earlier are missing. Some light drizzle coming in tonight. We'll look at the timing of that. That next storm still on track for the weekend, and it will be producing some accumulating snow. So we'll be talking about how much and whether or not we're going to go back to these 40s after this weekend cool down. All that when we see you again in a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead, a home delivery upgrade for groceries when giant retailer is testing a smart solution to keep your food safe. Also, prosecutors say it could be the richest criminal organization in the world. We'll tell you what a modern day mafia trial looks like. And a gender role reversal caught on camera? A miracle of birth underwater when we come back.